Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 256, 256. Hope you guys are doing well, hope you guys are doing great. As you guys can tell, I'm doing amazing, I'm very well lathered, I've got some good, um, what's that brand called, Vaseline cocoa butter on me. Um, I also kind of covered myself with a little bit of baby oil, just to give myself a little bit of sheen. I'm even thinking of developing my own little moisturizer that mixes the best of cocoa butter and the baby oil so you can get that nice buttery sheen but it can actually you know absorb into your skin and make you glow like Rihanna right that might be my next little hustle move you know first I was selling those little curl sponges now I'm going to be selling cocoa butter what now huh? people are out there selling t-shirts selling lanyard and pouch and little roadman bags and stuff and doing little socks with you know dtg printing and it looks all weird and it stretches now nah, i'm gonna go straight i'm gonna go completely the other way and just start doing some moisturizer stuff man just you know go out there and really be a beacon of hope to us dark skin i see free males out there right you know bang your doors man bang your doors <laughs> but apart from that i hope you guys are doing well i hope you guys are doing fine i'm doing pretty well as i've mentioned previously i'm um, in the moment i'm currently collating loads of songs loads of tunes for my next dj set which is happening at the heath cotton star on december the 21st so check out my website for that and more information um just putting some stuff together i like to always have a, a new bunch of songs i'm going to play when i play out I don't necessarily like to carry over the last set. Some people are a bit, you know, finicky about that sort of thing. The thing that worked out previously, they'll just bring it again. I tend to always kind of flip it on its head and change what I'm going to play. Sometimes it might be jazz. Sometimes it might be reggae. It might be dub. It might be punk rock. It might be rock in general. It might be some indie stuff, some hip hop, R&B, house, disco, funk, soul, whatever. I try and mix it up and try and bring something fresh and new to the... um places i play in of course i have like a little you know secret stash a little an hour a little hour to an hour and a half of absolute killer hits i know it's always gonna duppy right and i've always got the advantage of having a really good uh, uk garage playlist that i can also kind of go through and select some good tunes in and you know if you play around east london and you're playing in a bar or, or a bar or pub that tends to kind of attract um, you know, uh, middle-aged parents, maybe parents are probably a little bit older than me, maybe five to ten years older than me, they will really, really appreciate you kind of shelling it down with a little UK garage shit. Even though I don't like pay playing garage personally because I think it's a little bit played out and I think there are people out there that do it better than I can. So to kind of start doing that, it's a bit corny. But, you know, I'm a service guy. I like to provide a good service. I like to be um, a good companion. I like to be a good... Um, What's that thing called? A good, not companion, maybe companion, a good person, a good part of the night, maybe add to the night, not take away from it. You know that good stuff, innit? Because some people like to just play what they want to play and the crowd can like can go and F off. And I'm not that kind of dude. I want to give people um, the opportunity to hear good stuff. And hopefully I can, um, you know, come to that kind of agreement with them sonically. You know, I play some good stuff. You hear it. You think it's good. You dance. We keep it moving. So check out my website for more info. My next night, La Betise at the Heathcote and Star, coming at you very, very soon. Am I in the wrong place? Should I be more centered? Um, as you can tell, if you're watching via the YouTube video, I've upgraded the quality of the camera. Oh, I've upgraded the, the the settings on the camera. Actually, the quality is still the same. Or well, the camera is still the same, but the quality is increased. So I've kind of upped it a bit more because I've been able to get some more RAM. So now you'll be able to see me in clear HD. If you're watching this via YouTube, if you're listening via the podcast app, then what are you doing? Why don't check out the video as well? Link will be in the bio. You'll be able to see the link um, to my channel. Check that out. I, I post some clips up on there as well that I kind of cut out from the podcast. So if you're not bothered about listening to me ramble for an hour, check out the clips channel, which I'll link in the show notes description. If you're watching via YouTube, give me a thumbs up if you think this looks nice, right? If I'm nice and clear, give me a little likey. Let me know what you think. Anyway, let's get into it. Got loads of links from the internet that I want to talk about. Loads of open tabs, actually, mostly concerning streetwear, some music stuff, some startup stuff, some hip hop stuff, you know, the general mix of stuff I talk about. Again, if you like what I... I'm talking about give me a like give me a subscribe if you're listening to the podcast app leave me a five-star review you know all that good stuff any questions get in touch you know simple communication back and forth i speak you listen you reply i don't know no, I, don't, I always reply so don't worry about that but let's get into some topics some good stuff some bad stuff and everything in between so first of all what do we have here on the list we have 
News that TikTok is going to release their own streaming service. This is from Hypebeast. TikTok may release its own streaming, its own music streaming service coming very, very soon. The company behind TikTok, which is ByteDance, is rumored to be in, in talks with several big record companies to launch a platform to compete with Spotify and Apple Music, which is interesting, right? They're, they're doing a collaboration with record companies. It's long been believed that, um, especially now we have news that supposedly, allegedly, Zane Lowe at Apple or Apple in general, Apple Beats One, they pay some of the big artists to come and do radio interviews with them exclusively at some point. So if you've ever wondered why Beats One tend to have like, you know, some of the biggest artists always coming down and talking to Ebro and Zane Lowe and, you know, going through the motions and talking absolute bullshit. Now you know that they actually pay uh, the artist or the record label or whatever it may be for their time. And some and most, if not all record labels, all radio stations don't do that, which is why they're able to get the best um, guest. Especially now that most of the bigger artists tend to not want to go on the likes of The Breakfast Club and Hot 97 because they're a bit more combat combative and maybe a bit more gossip laden or gossip, um, you know, driven. It makes sense to go to Apple. And if you've got the cherry on top of pay me, then why not? So with that, um, we now see that there is some kind of payola going on. But we know that it only works with certain record labels, have relationships with certain radio stations, right? So to now see a streaming platform potentially actively going out there and trying to, and trying to actively going out there, not hiding the fact that they're working with a record label is very interesting because you're not going to get much. Um, it doesn't seem as if it will be an even playing field. If they link up with Columbia Records and you're not on Columbia, what? why would you assume if you're an up and coming artist that your work or your album is going to get promoted in the same way that other high-level Colombian artists will. It won't happen, will it? So that's the bit where I'm a bit miffed about. I'm not too sure what, it, what, what that means for everyone else who's kind of putting their um, work out on the DSPs. According to the Financial Times, the streaming service will first arrive in the opening markets such as India before making its introduction to the United States. So maybe it might be region specific, you don't know. Um, it went on to report music executives are keen to make money from the free to use app TikTok, whose users utilize as lip syncing, dancing and music in their videos. So again, I'm interested to see how it's going to work because we know TikTok has got, I think that it's been downloaded over a billion times. They've got a really active user base. Most of it, if not all of it, is primarily towards um, younger kids at the moment. But we know most apps always start like that. They always start... Um, being directed at a specific segment of the population. Just look at Facebook, right? When Facebook first launched, it was effectively a way to connect uh, college students with other people in their campuses and stuff. I know when I was first on Facebook and I went to Central St. Central Martins, it was mostly a platform for people that went to university or further education. And then after that, and after the fact when it kind of blew up, it was a way to kind of connect everybody all around the world. So don't be surprised if we see um, TikTok age up along the, along the way, right? So when people start... When, when Instagram's uh, reach starts to decrease or people just start to get bored of the platform, because even when I don't use Instagram too often, whenever I pop in and out of it, I always see that a lot of my friends or people that I know tend to not post too much on their actual feed. No one posts that that often. So people are not posting a lot of stories. They usually, so people are not posting a lot on their Instagram feed, but they're posting a lot of Instagram stories. So they're using it effectively like a Snapchat platform. So maybe when that kind of phases out maybe people might tend to go to tiktok for a little bit of silly stuff maybe tiktok might be the way that people do their um what was that thing called when people have a, a, an instagram account that's like underground that's like no one knows about they can post up silly stuff i forgot the name of it but maybe they might, they might do that for on twitch on tiktok sorry so that could be an avenue but i'm interested, I'm interested to see how it's going to age up whether or not we're going to see people above the age of 25 lip syncing and dancing around and making um sketch videos in the same way that we see people doing it now i'm not sure if that's going to work out in the same way watch the space i guess but yeah it just see how it's going to work will it be region specific if they launch it in india will we see just um indian will we see just mostly indian artists who are signed to their labels there kind of get promoted or will it be a global service that kind of allows artists from all over the world to blow up on there i do know that the is it Jay Sean? That Jay Sean record blew up on TikTok, right? The Jay Sean remix of Ride or something like that. I remember reading that sometime ago. Some some DJ, I think from Eastern Europe or some guy. He's like, what? Not, not that well known. He made a, a random edit of a Jay Sean track, put it up on SoundCloud. They didn't really get that money hits. And then suddenly, I don't know, it got found by some kid and they started making a challenge with it. It was, like make, it was part of the little sketches they do on TikTok. And then suddenly it blew up. And now this kid, this guy, we made this random edit off from Jay Sean's track has now blown up and he's got bookings all over the place and all that stuff. And I think he might have got signed as well. And I think Jay Sean too, and he's flipping as a great dude that he is, he decided not to kind of, you know, try and rinse the guy out of any money like Sting did with um, 
with Juice World and Lucid Dreams. He just kind of like, yeah, like let him enjoy his moment. And I had my fun with that tune. I got what I can have it. If he wants to have fun, let him have fun. So that was quite cool to see. So maybe we might see something like that happen. A lot of a lot of older tracks come popping up again. It would be quite cool if Nelly hot in here like suddenly blew up again. And he's and yeah, you know I mean, just just weird tracks come back out again, and kids connect with him. It's just cool to see, really. So let's see where this kind of leads to. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to do it, where they're going to do it, how it's going to launch. But the streaming service is getting competitive, man. From even just the movie stuff with Disney Plus and compete with Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and all this stuff, and Apple as well. And now we've got the music wars are going on. There's news now that Amazon have effectively made their music service their music streaming service free. To effectively attract new customers, or so let's see what happens there. It's all kicking off, man. It's all kicking off. So next on the list here, what do we else? What else do we have here? I don't know what else do we have. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. So next, what do we have here? Um. Oh, um. New Year's Eve. I'm not sure what you guys are doing for New Year's Eve. I'm not sure if you're either going to be out or not. But if you're not going to be out, and you're wondering what to do, right? Maybe this is the time to think about going to World Unknown. Uh, well done on a friend, uh, New Year's Eve party. If you're not familiar, well done on, I think I spoke about them beforehand. They're a little London collective, a UK collective. We put together some really cool um, events and nights in London. I've been to a couple before. Um, Andy, who runs it, is a, pr is a proper solid dude. And they usually put on quite a good fun night. So I would encourage you guys, if you're not sure where to go on New Year's Eve, um, I have. I, I think we're, we're going to probably do something really low-key and not go anywhere. But I think everyone else, you know, Maybe you want to go out and get a bit crazy. And I would advise if you're going to spend your money to go out to a nightclub, do it with people who actually put on good events and actually make uh, the New Year's Eve parties a bit special. Because the worst thing that you could do for New Year's Eve, especially if you don't want to go out, is giving your money to a people who are essentially doing it for the cash grab. Because as much as people like to complain about promotion is really difficult to do a night, it is effectively a cash grab. If you can do it well enough and you can execute it at a high level, you can make a lot of money in one night, right? Um, just from essentially booking people to come into a party, promoting it and marketing it and getting people to come down to an event space. You're not really doing anything else. But if you're really about this New Year's Eve life or you're really about this party promoter and, you know, cultural curator, nightlife aficionado, you're really going to go out of your way to get, you know, a bespoke sound system. You're going to get in de decorations, a really eclectic mix of guests, a really eclectic mix of DJs, uh, cool invites, maybe some prizes um maybe goodie bags on the way like you, you're gonna really go for it you're gonna put on a real party and it's gonna eat into your profits but you know you don't care you want it to be legendary you want people to look back in 10 years and say oh yeah i remember when you put on that sick party yeah that's what you're your vibe so i think if you want that kind of vibe and you're for that definitely put your money and your trust in world unknown this is a fly i've got up here on the screen world unknown new year's eve 31st of december 2019 the text here says the following um we've got 50 10 50 10 pound tickets for world unknown new year's eve left they'll be definitely gone by friday at latest so possibly before and after that it goes up to 15 and then 20 we'll start announcing the lineup for the two rooms at the weekend you're really going to like it it's super it's proper world unknown family affair and they've got the link for the tickets you can buy them at ticket taylor facebook events and instagram but i'm going to uh, put the link for, of the um, of the tickets for you to guys check out in the description so definitely check that out and give those guys your support because again there's not many people who put on actually good actual good parties in london people usually just book big artists to play in venues and that's not actually a good party a part of a good party is being able to cultivate or bring together a whole group of really interesting people in an interesting space um maybe change it a bit from what it is usually and kind of give people something to you know to remember an experience that they're going to savor something that doesn't need to something that doesn't um predominantly need to look good on instagram but actually needs to feel good and that's something you don't really get too often in these kind of spaces so definitely check it out if you're that way inclined um one of my favorite nights out there and again really solid people behind it so definitely check them out and give them your support next on the list let's move on we have da -da -da -da. For some reason, ASAP Rock is designing prison uniforms for the uh, the same prison he's in in Sweden. You guys are, familiar, are aware of what happened with ASAP Rocky when he went to Sweden and got into a little scuffle in the streets, and then the the Swedish judicial system decided it was um, just for him to spend I don't know what was it nearly a month in jail because of you know essentially he react he kind of um, met aggression with aggression on the street 
And I guess uh, Scandinavia isn't really down for that. And he vowed not to come back again. Or a few artists vowed not to come back again. Trump got involved. Other people got involved. They eventually got let out. He did a wise thing, I think, uh, for his image and didn't thank Trump publicly, which was probably saved him from any kind of aggro. And, um, but now it seems as if he's um, designing uniforms for people in the prison. I think someone else did this, was doing this. Was it Kanye do it? was going to do this and somebody else? I'm not sure what this is about. If this is a... Uh, a, 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 an agreement between the record label and maybe the Swedish judicial system because he might have some money going he might have some deals coming up with I don't know H&M or something so he might not want to mess up the bag he might do this he might also do an Ikea collaboration I don't know there's, there's things there's other forces at play that probably led to this situation but it just seems a bit weird for it to go to you know it being one of the most bleakest situations in life you know one minute you're on the streets you know, parading around, being ASAP Rocky and doing your thing, you get into a scuffle, well, next minute you're in a Swedish prison. Don't, don't get me wrong, it's not Guantanamo Bay in Sweden, but to go from that point to now suddenly designing the clothes for the prisoners is like, what? I don't know. Um, he didn't come out and have any really encouraging words about how he was treated. I didn't really hear him go over the top about how well he treated and the experience he had there, the people he met. So I don't know what this is about. But again, this is an article from High Sobiety. It says ASAP Rocky is designing uniforms for Swedish prisons now. ASAP Rocky has designed a line of uniforms for Swedish jail in which he was detained. He made the surprising reveal during a recent conversation with Forbes stating that he was doing that, what he can to encourage people to do better. But what's that going to... Again, these... these um Man, to be a celebrity sometimes, you have to be really careful about how where you how you throw your name around and what you put your name against like this makes no sense why would the swedish judicial system want to give prisoners who are obviously in there for you know egregious crimes or you know they need some kind of rehabilitation the gift or the prize of wearing something that's made by asap rocky why are why do the the swedish, why does the swedish judicial system even think that's a good idea number one why are the prisoners getting that number two do they even want it number three and why is this a Rocky doing it? Number five or number four? Like, it makes no sense. It's just a bizarre state of affairs. And again, it's a, not a cheapening of your name, of your brand. It's just an odd collaboration. You know, it's like Lady Gaga and Kodak. It doesn't cheapen your brand, but it's like, why? Like, why? Why, why are you doing it? It'll be similar. You know what it'll be similar to? It'll be similar to Billie Eilish and, Co and Kodak. Like, you know, you're 18 years old. You've not probably used a film camera in your whole life. You probably don't even know what a film camera is. And then you're collaborating with Kodak. It makes no sense, right? Yeah, the bag might be good and stuff, but come on, really? Is it all about money? Like, aren't you getting enough money? Not enough money, but don't... Isn't there a possibility to get money in other ways? Sometimes you have to leave money on the table. You have to kind of walk away from deals. Not all good money is... Not all money is good money. I think sometimes that's a bit of a concept that's, you know, foreign to most people who aren't celebrities and don't have the access to all these opportunities because unfortunately, or fortunately... Once you reach that apex, it seems as if or once you reach that mountain and you climb up and you're working way up the, the entertainment and industry ladder, what happens is that usually uh, more opportunities come to you, right? You have to, you get to a point where you can't, there's not enough, you don't have enough hours in a day to accept the opportunities that come your way. But then once you are broken hustling, you had to just scrape and fight over any opportunity that was available. But once you get successful, you just get inundated with opportunities. And then you probably feel as if like, you know, especially if you've come from somewhere where you haven't had much, you probably feel as if like, I can't say any notes, anything, because I don't know if my career stops tomorrow. Um, but I don't know, man. I don't know. This seems really weird. Anyway, article continues. Rocky, real name Rakeem Myers, was held in Cronenberg, Rahman prison during his widely publicized trial this summer before being charged with assault against a 19-year-old. When I was going through my whole situation, Rocky explained, the whole time I used to look on television and see Swedish uh, fans showing me so much love and I want to give it back. But what the, what are the fans got to do with the prison? Oh, so he's designing uniforms for what? For so to sell in a shop? What? What's the fans got to do with prison? I don't get this. Uh, part of that giving back has been designing new uniforms for the inmates in the facility. So he saw the fans on TV protesting and singing his name, and now he wants to make uniforms for the prison inmates. What? Uh, okay, cool. Uh, Frederick Willem, the head of the Cronenberg, the Kronen, the Kronenberg prison, saw a Swedish daily newspaper, um, Afton Bladet that Rocky had reached out about donating clothes to the inmates, but nothing has been confirmed yet. <laughs> man, I'm not reading this anymore, man. This is nonsense. Like, good. Rocky's a cool dude and stuff, but some of the moves he makes, it's like, what?
But you know, everyone's got their thing. Everyone's everyone can do what they want to do. I'm no I'm no one to tell him what to do. And he's got a good team around him. I'm sure they'll advise him in a better way to do things. Bow do ba ba ba. Um. So moving on from that, we have an article about. Uh, list reveals the best collaborations, biggest viral products, and the hottest brand in 2019. List always do this sort of like end of year uh, roundup of some of the best things that happen. Usually it's a bit hype led, you know, it's the stuff that people are searching, Google trends, sort of stuff, analytics on their website. You know, it's not much, it's not much of a much really in that regard. It probably the brands that list are probably selling the most are usually brands that are upper bracket of terms of the price range probably attracts a certain customer it's not very indicative of the whole consumer base out there but you know it's at least provides some context some idea of what's happening out there in the field so this article from um highest to bias is the following about it right global fashion search platform list has revealed a 2019 year fashion report the streetwear heavy dossier compiles the year's biggest trends and brands, viral products, best collaborations, and more. I bet all those fashion types who are annoyed about streetwear being on the runway can't wait until this list is, con- you know, is um, uh, in what you call it contains mostly tailored fashion brands, isn't it? Because they all uh, they all hate streetwear now. It's interesting, isn't it? I mentioned it before, and I still think the whole fashion scene hate getting um, getting tired of streetwear and hoodies and stuff is a slight dog whistle about the fashion scene not wanting too many brownies and not too, not, not, not too many black and brown people at their um, at their fashion shows, right? Because for the most part, Asian people tend to kind of steer towards a luxury fashion scene that, you know, you except for maybe the South Koreans and the K-pop people, they're, you know, they're quite streetwear or street influenced, but for the most part, they're going to be able to kind of, you know, uh, put gowns on, you know, some of the biggest um, Asian uh, or Far East um, actresses and actors out there. But, you know, everyone else just wants to wear some of the best designer, luxury, streetwear-inspired clothing. It's not going to go anywhere, but the fashion scene is so tired of it. You can tell they hate it. Anyway, it continues. On the brand's front, Off-White um, was the world's most searched over the past year. Interesting. It's the most searched, but you don't really see it worn, in it. Off-White is weird. I'm sure he, he does numbers, but when you do see it worn outside, I only see a particular segment of the population wearing it and where i live in stratford it's only only students who um live in a student accommodation just near where i live that's it i only see people from that university wearing it that's it and if i go to central london it's, it's it, maybe it's a bit of a change there you see some european kids wearing it but it's not something you see everybody wearing like you know in general whereas even in the hood where i live there are people wearing gucci uh wearing um tom brown even I've seen some guys wearing Rick even sometimes in this area, which is really funny. Maybe mostly Congolese dudes, but people still wear Rick and Yoji Yamamoto. So it's a strange thing to, you know, you don't really see people wearing off-white too much. When you see it, obviously you know it because it's got those big garish logos and colors and now it's got the big, you know, full, full of fits and uh, really big shapes and sizes and all that malarkey. That can, you can kind of spot that from a mile away. But interesting to see. It's the most searched, but do people actually buy it or they're just trying to, I don't know, Keep an eye on it. Still, he designs. I don't know. Interesting to see where it goes. Meanwhile, Bottega Veneta Renaissance under the guidance of creative director Daniel Lee was awesome. The guy is probably like my age, I think, as well. Creative director of Bottega Veneta is absolutely smashing it. Those boots that he put out recently were. I think his first collection, I was always a fan of when that dropped. I'm glad to see everyone kind of um, clocking on and and buying those uh, massive uh, Chelsea boots that he has that come out to your fire that look really, really nice. Um, Daniel Lee underlines his crowning as a world's breakout brand, leading out competition the likes of. Telfar and Pia Moss. Going into 2020, List predicts a big 12 months for brands including Elix and Marine Seri. Or Serre, I don't know you pronounce that. Returning to work, Virgil Abloh can look back on a stellar 12 months. His IKEA collaboration was named one of the best of the year, taking place alongside Sakai and Nike, Supreme in Stone Island, Rick Owens and Burger Socks, and List states consumers spent an average of 192 on a pair of new sneakers which is 39% year-on-year increase, which means we're going to see more sneakers priced at more higher prices. Congratulations for that, you nonsense consumers. Um, average brand on a t-shirt increased from 16% up to $67, which is, you know, what it is. Um, you remember when £50 for a t-shirt was nuts? You remember when Bape, people didn't want to buy Bape t-shirts when they were £50? I think that was the first brand, I think, I remember clocking when they broke that ceiling. Even maybe Double Taps maybe were probably the first one. Because I used to always buy my Japanese brand secondhand on Yahoo JP. But I remember going to a store and seeing like a Double Taps t-shirt, a Bape t-shirt for like 70 quid. You're like, flipping hell. 
you did, yeah, it didn't make any sense to you. Then you wore it. And you're like, okay, cool, I get it. You know what I mean? The cool, cool materials, cool shape. But do you remember when that was a big deal? And now you're seeing like nonsense brands pricing their t-shirt at sixty, eighty dollars. Brands that have no no right to put their to put their prices that high are doing it. And I get it. It's a positioning thing, isn't it? If you're a brand, you want to be positioned alongside the brands that you want to be next to as opposed and the only way to do it nowadays especially because most of the buyers and merchandisers in the stores don't really know what they're doing or are mostly trying to you know increase the sales uh, per square meter are just grouping all the expensive brands or expensive brands and just that's it there's no real curation of the space you don't find like cool you know underground skateboard brands next to you know a really luxury high-end brand they're gonna put all the high-end stuff that's you know selling for a hundred dollars plus in that section and anything else in that section it's a bit annoying but you know what can you do and i wonder how they chose the best collaborations what's the criteria for best collaboration is it because of resale value is it because of cues virality on social media what is it because if it's that then i don't i don't know how do you there was meant there was loads of really good collaborations the last 12 months is it just slows hanging through that really isn't it but i don't know what do i know um but it befits in the times searches including the sustainability keywords increase 75 percent year on year but no one really cares about sustainability everyone talks a big game but no one really cares let's 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 call a spade a spade that's another that's sustainability is replaced like plus size models and stuff and diversity and it? it's the next kind of social trope um activist kind of uh what you call a flag that these fashion types are going to try and fly and make themselves look as if they care about the world they don't care we, we don't care they want to go to their paris fashion week shows turn up um, have a good time, sit in front row, drink their expensive drinks, go back home, wear nice clothes, and that's it. This idea that they can do more with fashion if they uh, stay towards sustainability is crazy. Like, it just doesn't make sense. The bottom dollar, it's not going to make sense. The big executives that make the decisions aren't going to do it. Just forget about it. Um, if the brands themselves, you know, individually can make a change, you know, Vivian Westwood um, does what she does. Um, uh, who's the other lady that does it as well? Uh, Stella McCartney is big on sustainability. Cool, you can do it yourself, especially if you've got LVMH in backing you. But then again, there's conflicting interest there. But I think overall, to make people give a shit about sustainability when there's other parts of fashion that are just completely broken is insane. But again, what do I know? Um, and then lastly, here, other notable takeaways um, are you see his hottest sneaker, the Alexander McQueen oversized sneaker, and the logo of the year's Fendi Zuka print, which I kind of don't agree with. I think the hottest sneaker of this year, quite clearly, has to be the Dr. Martin's Jaden. It has to be. That's the biggest shoe of the year. That or one of the feelers. You can't, and another feeler isn't going to get any love from the list people and the fashion types because they're, you know, they're a bit too snobby for that sort of stuff. But the feeler, the Dr. Martin's Jaden boot, um, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with and you know what that is. Let me just quickly get it up on here. Dr. Martin's Jaden. That is a that is a the stellar shoe, and again, it's just a, an amazing thing to see how it's been able to kind of resurge over these years. I've got my um, Jaden boots here, actually. Let me show you. These are these are my Jadens, right? These are probably the these are maybe the third pair I've had of Jaden boots. Maybe the third pair in all the years I've been wearing Dr. Martins. When I used to work at Dr. Martins, I got a couple of pairs free that I wore into the ground. I wore them every single day when I was playing, when I was, you know, going to East London and being the hipster that I was and just completely destroyed them. And of course, because I worked there, I was able to get another pair for free. And I think this might be the same pair that I got back th back then. And I've still, you know, they've still got a lot of life in them. They're still, the back of the heel is a bit messed up and I probably worn them a, a bit too often, but, you know, they've got a lot of life in them. Amazing shoes. So I don't know how long ago that was, if that was like, I don't know what, like four, five, six years ago. I don't know, or, or maybe more since I've worked at Dr. Martins. But it's just incredible and cool to see somehow the trend has somehow kind of peaked. It kind of came back into vogue again. I don't know how that happened. I don't know who they placed it on. I don't know who done the marketing, but definitely whoever the Dr. Martin who was able to kind of do this, it kind of reserves all my kind of claps and adulation because that's 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 what marketing is. That's what activation is. That's what seeding is really about. The ability to take a shoe that's been out for ages and somehow give it a new lease of life and it's completely blown up. When I went to Berlin, um, what, recently, especially recently, because it was a bit colder, um, towards the beginning of October, they were everywhere. You couldn't find, like, I think one in five people, or maybe two in five that were queuing at, outside of Bergheim was wearing a pair of Jaden boots. Everyone was wearing, and of course it makes sense, right? So it's effectively your, your quintessential 1460 uh, Dr. Martin's boot with a stack sole, right? Um, perfect for the Bergheim dance floor, perfect for just walking around every day, and just a perfect complement to kind of that kind of, you know, get um, techno, all black look. And just a really versatile shoe, 
but it was everywhere. This, 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 along with the feeler, has to be the one standout. The Alexander McQueen oversized Stan Smith looking trainer is a big shoe. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of it. I love it. But I still think, in terms of who you see regularly wearing this kind, these kind of shoes, especially because you can get this, you know, you can get Dr. Martin's uh, shoe fairly cheap compared to maybe the Alexander McQueen that might be 200 plus. I think the Dr. Martin's boot is probably 100 something, 150 around that kind of mark. It's, it's, it's the most successful. Uh, it's, it's probably has to be the most um, uh, well-worn shoe that has to, I've seen on the streets. 100%. There's no way that, that the Alexander McQueen beats this, in my opinion, anyway. But what do I know? What do I know? Um, but yeah, that's basically it. I'll put the list thing article in the show if you guys to check out yourself. Uh, but that's effectively it, really, in that regard. So let's get out of that. Do, 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 do. Let's move on. What else do we have here on the tabs? And we can get into some other topics. Oh, do, 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 do. We got something about coats. We're gonna probably ace that one. Let's, let's ice that one for now. What else do we have here? Bottega Veneta boots. Let's ice that for now. Hamilton and Poggy. We don't really care about that. And then what else we have here? Club Fantasy. Joe Perez. Not really that keen on this. Um, oh, so let's go back again to Sakai's right. I'm going to probably update my opinion on this. I think now I've seen some other images of them. I think I'm down. I know I said before who needs another pair of Sakai LD waffles, but I need another pair. I'm completely down. They look beautiful. Um, I remember I mentioned it a couple episodes ago that Sakai are linking up with Nike and kind of rinsing the LD waffle um, trend or collaboration that they put out to death, which I don't mind. I think the silhouette when we first debuted on the Paris Fashion Week runway show was something that we haven't seen lately from nike it was again an ode back to the kind of good old i remember when junior watanabe put out a lot of retros of the ld waffle and some other so, some other really um vintage but probably 70s 60s um nike's runners that were out on the runway that looked really cool reminding me of that era and again with all the stuff we're seeing now advancements in tech the abundance of 90s inspired trainers out on the market to see sakai taking a chance with a silhouette that isn't as in vogue as the other silhouettes that we, are, we see nowadays is big and the way they've done it you know this kind of stacked um mashed together concept it really kind of makes it look a little bit more contemporary a little bit more modern and again i just think it's limitless what they can do with it they can take that kind of modernist idea with other shoes i don't think it's worked as well on the blazer which is probably um um, I'm just I'm justified in saying that based on the resale prices on StockX, you can probably still pick up a a blaze a Sakai blazer for you know pretty cheap. But the, some of the LD Wolf, especially some of the more favorable colorways, are completely you know out of range for most people. So that could just show their appeal. And again, I'm a big sucker for black and black and white trainers. Don't you know? Don't shoot the messenger, or don't you know? Don't blame me for what I am. And now there's some updated pictures from Hypebeast that show just how amazing they look and this is um an update on from the 20th of november this is the following after getting a first look at the port potential sakai ld waffle kicks who's kicks kicks who show this um instagram profile has shown us some other images of what it's going to look like and it looks banging so i've got it up on your screen from instagram it looks absolutely sick i'm a big fan of this shoe i can't wait to see it out we're gonna see it oh spring summer next year interesting isn't it and uh, all black hmm but this is standard though, isn't it? Nike don't really put out shoes based on color in terms of the season. They just put them out when they put them out, really, isn't it? And maybe if spring, summer 20 is um, when Sakai are going to debut another collection of the Paris Week Fresh on the Paris One ratio, maybe. I don't know, but I would rather get them sooner rather than later. But again, you know, maybe all good things come to those who wait. So you've got here the black LD Waffle uh, upper. I'm assuming, what is it? A mix of new buck. Of yeah, new buck suede leather and whatever that nylon uh, material is on the insides, which look really nice. I like that the fact that the sushis have got different materials, which you've seen in the other LD waffles, and they just look really, really cool, man. I'm a big fan of the shoe. I think they look amazing. I take back everything I said. I want to see more collaboration, more colorways. If anything, if I was going to edit them slightly, you know what I would have done? Maybe I would have uh, made the swoosh underneath a different color, so maybe had that white. Because it's quite cool to have like the black white, well, the black, all black upper with the white accents, maybe the white swoosh. So that would have looked quite cool. Maybe some ed, some customizable, customizers don't do that. Customizers always like to put, you know, Fendi or luxury materials and pipe and skin on trainers. But if an actual customizer could do a little edit and actually put some, dip, uh, make the swoosh underneath the top swoosh white, that would look really cool. 
I think I look amazing. But yeah, I'm a big fan of these. As always, I always love all black trainers. Are always going to be a staple in my wardrobe, and these look, you know, amazing. Big, big fan of these. So spring summer twenty, you're going to see these LD waffles in your shops very soon. Hopefully, I don't catch any L's. Hopefully, I'll be able to get a pair. But you know, sometimes these things don't happen. So <laughs> let's see. Oh, mate, they look really cool. I like them, man. They look banging. I'm a big fan. I take it all back. I take it all back. Next on the list here, before we move into some other stuff, Sean Weatherspoons have now, uh, or Weatherspoon, how you pronounce his surname, um, has uh, announced or given an update on his ASICS, ASICS collaboration. I'm not sure what happened with Sean Weatherspoon and Nike, because someone explained in the comments when you see this clip later, um, did he get ousted? Did they fall out? Like, I'm not sure what happened. Because usually Nike, if they got like, um, if they get some good, res if they get a good, response from a collaboration especially with somebody like sean who's quite well regarded in a sneaker head world and has a cool shop and people seem to like him and he seems very passionate about the shoes and stuff you know I and mean, even though some of the stuff that he does or makes isn't necessarily my cup of tea he seems like he's got you know he he reminds me of the old school kind of crooked tongues forum users right he's really about all about the sneakers but he also one of the rare ones has also all, about the sneakers but also sense, also has a good sense of personal style some of the sneaker heads, especially some of the youtube sneaker reviewer guys like you know they have zero source they just have all expensive trainers and you know well-lit studios i'm not hating just saying the truth um so sean Weavers, but i wonder what's happened with him and nike because i would have seen that collaboration would have gone a bit further i did remember seeing a leak of the air max uh nat 197 thing that he done that was in all blue corduroy that didn't end up coming out which is a shame again that air max 197 whatever it was should have won the shoe of the year whatever year that came out that was effective that, that might have been one of the most um successful tier zero shoes that i've seen in a while in terms of seeing regular regular people wearing it i saw so many people in just general people especially um uh female artist types loves wearing like pink pants you know past um teal blue pants and stuff and matching it with their shoes um, again i saw loads of dudes wearing it like beating them up like which is cool to see really isn't it like because usually people tend to kind of put their trainers in perspex boxes and stuff but his shoes really were worn uh far and wide by a lot of people but i think they might have come out the same year as tom Sachs, maybe miles Jell, so that might have made it a bit of harder competition but still look cool but anyway so the assets collaboration has been announced um it'll be pretty cool if he's been able to make assets cool um i still think asics for the most part for most brands is like the brand that you kind of collaborate with because you're not at the nike level yet you're not on nike or adas's radar so you're trying to you know you fight over the scraps and most of these brands are happy to collaborate with um with anyone because you know they want some exposure they won't be able to tap into the youth market um they want to kind of um age down their consumer in some regard especially in asics you probably are selling the majority of your um wares to sports enthusiasts i'm assuming right mostly runners and stuff are wearing or people that or partake in a particular sport maybe i'm not too sure um so it's cool to see them doing this um this is an article from hype beast is the following sean wolverspoon how you pronounce it not wolverspoon wolverspoon right has revealed more images of his collaboration of the gel light free which i mentioned previously is one of my favorite models a model that kind of maybe got me introduced to kind of wearing asics in the first place with a little split tongue i love it um uh, so it's collaborations with a6 and atmos a three-way collaboration which is pretty cool um if you're familiar with if you're a sneakerhead then you know what atmos is uh pedigree is in the game and the collaborations they've done over the years some of the shoes they just have they're able to buy it's just insane you know, the japanese uh the japanese uh, buyers for sneaker stores are just another level from what we have here in the uk the design comes complete with a plethora of customized ascents to match this colorful quadra construction uh, i like the fact that you can t it looks like you can kind of replace bits and pieces of the of the shoe you can put different logos on it you, know, you can tear apart the back bit similar to that do you remember the jeff mcfredridge um vandals the jeff mcfredridge vandals you remember those shoes the ones that you could cut into and kind of burn and stuff is it jeff what's his name mcfred mcfredridge vandals is it vandals let me see if i can find them there was silver yeah they're the ones i've got them up on the screen oh so good jeff, jeff mcfredridge these were really cool. So it reminds you of that sort of era. So again, you can see like, you know, Sean Weatherspoon is an actual sneakerhead. He's about this life. So I'm definitely, I'm, he's definitely taken some inspiration from this sort of stuff. Um, that's how it comes brand new in the box. You've got these vandals that are essentially clean with a little pinstrap material. But then once you take a scalpel to the upper, it reveals all this loveliness underneath, right? So a nice reflective print. 
you can just kind of go crazy and kind of make them a bit different than what you've seen um, other people use and you know some really cool um, customs have been done with them with people online so maybe that's what um, Sean Weatherspoon kind of got his inspiration from I'm not too sure but it looked really cool he's got the addition of a Velcro accents with Nike he's done a couple of them too with the Air Forces and they look really nice I'm a really big fan of them I, I, I love the fact that he's owning the Cordray he's kind of making that cool and contemporary again I think Noah made a pair of swim shorts that were, did they make a pair of swim shorts that were Cordray some nutty thing did they do that I think it might have been Noah but when I think of Cordray I do I, I think of Noah um, maybe a bit more of a grown up brand um, I don't really think of like a you know I, I assume loads of Sean's followers are quite young kids who don't necessarily know that too, know that much about Cordray or would be seen dead wearing it so to see him kind of bringing it back and giving it a little contemporary spin is quite cool and it's a nice fresh take on it um, again Essex collaborations are pretty cool I like the fact that they use this model it has different panels uh, the app is really interesting so you can go really crazy with the colorways or, go, or make something quite conservative but I like the fact that he's really kind of gone for it and again it looks really awesome man um, you've got replaceable laces here different badges to put on them different logos and just an all-out bad boy shoe um, we don't have any idea when it's going to come out um sean weatherspoon's instagram caption says the following atmos and sw still early samples but this has been a dream come true and working with the og himself koji from um, atmos himself so that's amazing that's probably such a great opportunity imagine flying over to flipping atmos in japan and having a sit down with them and going through their archive and looking at their offices and seeing what they have it must gonna completely blow your mind so definitely congrats to him hopefully we see those shoes released very very soon they look incredible i'm a big fan of what this guy does and again one of the most underrated maybe an underrated and underused um sneaker collaborator out there some people or some brands are able to get you know a plethora of deals but this sean Web weatherspoon guy maybe the nike thing they, they sign an exclusivity deal and they kind of put you on ice but it's been odd to see the fact that he hasn't brought been able to make as many shoes since that thing dropped and again maybe we might this might be the invite the deluge of it but hopefully he does the hiroshi fujiwara stuff and doesn't just commit to one brand and is able to do collaboration with all those different people because i think that's where he's definitely going to differentiate himself and kind of lead the pack that way you could possibly be the reincarnation of mr hiroshi fujiwara you never bloody know stranger things have happened so um next on the list here talking about hiroshi fujiwara we have an update that Hiroshi is designing a pair of Red Wings and I'm all for it. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. He sits down with Hypebeast, got like a nice extensive little interview where he's speaking about it. But again, um, this is a this is a, this is to me an example of the power of influences. And again, um Hiroshi is probably a you know much bigger influence on streetwear than just simply being an influencer, but just for the simple just in terms of, you know, for us to understand what I'm talking about. He is made. He's made me want Red Wings when I wasn't even thinking about Red Wings. That's how much of an influence. That's how much of a drawing power he has. So for a brand like Red Wings, you know, who are kind of slowly and quietly doing their thing, selling their boots to hardware stores and you know builders and people that like to wear Red Wings week in week out. You know, it, there's not a time when I've been to Shoreditch walking around and I haven't seen an older gentleman who might be a graphic designer, <laughs> who might be a product designer, industrial designer as creative director who's not swirling around in a pair of really stiff indigo denims rolled up and a pair of red wings there's not been a time when i haven't seen it. i've always seen it especially with a green anorak on top of something right from i don't know um you know whatever album or something they're always wearing that that particular sort of look so it's a shoe that you're always going to see around similar to a wallaby similar maybe even to a timberland a staple in everyone's wardrobe but to take that um red wing and then to give it a flip and to kind of reintroduce people or make people want the black version is where he kind of separates himself because i think the burgundy pair is something that i think most guys should have in their wardrobe i would assume a pair of red wings would be similar to maybe owning a trench coat or a biker jacket or some some sort i think so it's a staple in your wardrobe the black pair i've not really thought about but again the pictures here make me want them so this is Hiroshi Fujiwara on fragment design title um red wing and his collaborative design process sitting down with the hype beast and just look how beautiful that looks. And is that is that clothing collaboration with Red Wings too? Or is that a Carhartt thing? I'm not sure. That looks incredible. Just look how beautiful that looks. Kind of like an off-white oily sole with a black leather upper. 
And again, this is this is the beauty of being Hiroshi Fujiwara and being able to be untethered. I think most inf- some influence some influence kids out there. I know sometimes the bag is attractive with some of these um, lesser known brands, but if you're able to, to get the bag, make a product, and also secure a deal where you don't sign exclusive um, rights away and you don't have a non compete clause in your contract, that's amazing because then you can go out to other brands and do your thing, right, and not worry that you're going to piss off your other employees. And this is the perfect way to do it, you know. For Hiroshi collaborates. Um, what with himself with Nike? I think using fragments. Does he not fragments only with Nike? He hasn't done Adidas, has he? I've not seen any Adidas stuff. But loads of other brands he's used, especially apparel wise, that he's been able to kind of dip in and dip out of, which has been quite cool to see. And then um, here's the bit of the interview to quickly read for you guys. Uh, can you tell me what got you interested in Red Wing boots again? Two thousand nineteen. He actually says one of my friends was going to buy a pair, so I decided to tag along and pick up a pair as well. A man of few words as he is. Can you tell us a bit of collaboration came to fruition? If I remember correctly, my friend Daisuke Gima was the one who connected us. When did that happen? It began around June this year. It is no, so he doesn't really talk up too much. It is no Red Wing had wanted to collaborate with Hiroshi because the style uh, Hiroshi Fujiwara wore regularly in the 90s. I've got loads of Ibashi magazines here that kind of prove that actually. Since the 90s became an iconic pair in Japan, then Daisuke Gima or Jima, best known for offering creative direction for brands like Sakai, stepped in to introduce the two party, which is always a good thing about streetwear. I think that's part of the reason why some of these collaborations are so, um, they take so long to happen because sometimes the people in charge, the creative directors or the ones that are leading the special collaborations or leading the kind of energy marketing stuff at Nike don't necessarily know about certain brands, don't have the relationships that need to kind of foster a good collaboration. So then when sometimes, you know, your friend is involved in streetwear or is involved in the scene, finally gets a job at a big place and they bring you in, that collaboration is going to be far better than anything else because there's an actual relationship you guys have. There's a, a rapport, which is why somebody like a Fraser Cook is so vital to like Nike even till now, right? Because he's got such good relationships with loads of people in the creative industry or in fashion or in streetwear that when it's time for him to press the button and get someone a deal, when the deal does happen, you get an amazing product because he's able to kind of connect people at, like, you know, connect the actual decision makers at Nike with the designer or actually connect them with a the design team to actually make sure he or she's vision is kind of come to fruition. That's what you're seeing with what Hiroshi has done over the years. And that's maybe the power of being able to be out there in a scene as important, as great as it is to hang out on the internet and chat shit in people's comments. It is quite cool to actually foster a community, whether it's on basement, whether it's in the streets and stuff, and actually get talking to people and connect and build something. Yeah. Start at night, uh, open up an online radio station, uh, stream your warehouse parties, run a couple of t-shirts, uh, print a couple of t-shirts, whatever maybe design some hats, bum bags, do a little zine, do something so that you can bring a little community around because you never know who those people are going to go on to be. And sometimes, not even about that, just the experience itself is pretty nice, isn't it? Like, I remember doing it for myself when I used to kind of, again, the whole Crooked Tongues thing was a good platform to meet a loads of amazing people. Um, and that kind of led to all these other interesting um, adventures that I kind of went on in my life. And again, it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, let me make friends with someone just in case you never know he might be the creative director at Adidas. No, just make friends in your scene so that you can be inspired and you can be driven to do cool, interesting things all the way, or, you know, for the rest of your life. Who, who, who wouldn't want to be Hiroshi Fujiwara's age and still making cool products in this scene and living a life that you know we don't really essentially have to grow up you can essentially still go to meetings wearing you know um, amazing denim from Visvim a pair of red wings the sick Gore-Tex jacket from I don't know whoever it may be and just strut in and still seal deals that's amazing uh, the interview and again you got Hiroshi inspecting the shoes you know making sure everything's right that just looks so they look so beautiful again the, the tensions in the detail I'm pretty sure like the, the beauty of some of Hiroshi Fujiwara's collaborations is that most of the time they look quite, you know, plain on first sighting. But then when you think about it, he's doing what every quintessential streetwear brand has kind of based its foundation on. If you read the story of Supreme, you would have known that James Jebby has said that when he went into a skate store once, he hated the merchandising of a skate store. It was really crappy and frumpy. He hated the clothing that they made, really poor quality. So he wanted to elevate this scene that he thought was amazing. He loved the personalities around it. You know the vigor that people went with went towards the skate skateboarding and just the culture around skateboarding. But he just wanted to up level up the clothing to match whatever he saw on the streets, and that's why he created Supreme. So once you see um, Fritz Fujiwara's level of collaboration, it's the same sort of thing. I take a shoe that I already like, but I can't find a particular colorway um, out in the market, and I edit it that way. So essentially, he probably couldn't find a black. Uh, red wing in that particular hue with the with the particular color eyelets with that particular stitching on the midsole with that particular finish maybe on the toe box 
uh, with that particular finish, maybe on the mids, on the, on the outside itself, maybe a different kind of insole. And those little details are what makes the collaboration that much special because you're not going to see. And the thing I like about it, you won't necessarily see this colorway or that design again in the general lineup of what Red Wings put out. It'll be a one and done thing. And if you don't get it at the time, it's kind of over, which is cool to see as well because, you know, nowadays with StockX, you know, nothing is ever sold out really. I've heard that in this interview, can that continues? I've heard that the collaboration model was inspired by your original customized pair with the vibrant soul swapped with a white soul was this the concept came up no he said actually that wasn't an idea i came up with by myself it was more of an idea that came up through the dis discussion i had with people at red wings in and jima we were talking about what we could possibly do we came up with this idea and started moving forward which is cool right because i remember that was a big part of the super future forums back in the day when people would get shoes especially boots and swap out the soles. Sometimes even Dr. Martins, they'll get a Dr. Martins and maybe um, get a, a really chunky platform sole, similar to what you might find in maybe a Rick Owens boot, uh, maybe a crepe sole in some regards. You know, Maybe it's not the best thing for winter because it's a bit slippery, but different kind of soles on different boots to kind of elevate the boot a little bit. And um, I think some brands were probably looking at those threads and probably taking those ideas and stealing them. And some brands were able to take those ideas and just co-opt them into a collection. But it, that was a good basis to kind of see that, you know, you are really about this life because that's how you fetch, essentially you get hooked into buying, you know, denim from Japan because you want a particular cut, you want a particular finish, you can't find it anywhere else. You, ha you hit up a proxy somewhere and you pay over the nose for a particular cut of jeans that you're going to wear every single day. This is this is the lifestyle we live. And the interview continues. How many Red Wing boots do you own? It says three or four probably. Do you still have uh, customized boots that became inspiration and collaboration? I should be able to find them somewhere. I'll look for them hard enough. But yeah, the boots are pretty cool. Three different models it looks like, right? Um, Of boot here. They look fucking beautiful. Red Wing and Fragment embossed on the side. Really, really nice and well done. I can't wait to see um, when they're going to be... Uh, available and how much they will be themselves so yeah definitely check out the interview um there's some clothing as well here is that collaboration with who's that is it john smedley the people that make knits right he's always got really cool ideas for collaborations where everything's really done like again look at the packaging of that in a kind of ziplock bag fragment logo on the front like some nice staples that you could wear with the trousers i mean with the boots just very very classily done man just and again just the the deep the the, the simplicity and this you know it reminds me a lot of this is kind of of um the stuff that jound is doing with apc just really simple basics you know he's kind of up he's kind of leveled them up a little bit add his little magic touch onto them and this is what you get so yeah one in a million dude who is for Juara, again one of my idols in the scene somebody i've always looked up to and again i recommend you check out this collaboration it's going to be out very very soon i guess next on the list what else do we have here you know let's let's go back to the list of the other stuff i have to talk about before we end because we're approaching an hour here uh storms has got a new album out and i don't really know storms is a weird conundrum right i don't do you know how many people that listen to storms like day in day out like as a daily listen I know he represents a lot more to the uk than just releasing albums right he's done a lot of great work the literary stuff, the liter the literary stuff that he's done has been really cool to see. His performance at Glastonbury was pretty cool. I think he's actually got that bulletproof vest in the front of his album cover that Banksy designed for him. I like the actual logo as a crown on his head, heavy that wears a crown. Um, you know, he's obviously in phenomenal shape. He's been banging out gym and stuff, completed gym in, in some regards. But as an artist, as an entertainer, I just can't get down with the dude, man. I've tried to listen to his albums. I've actually got the last what was the one where he's like, you know, standing on top of a table with his hands and stuff like beating down whatever it may be the kind of last supper image and it just sounded so cool like he is effectively like the commercial version of like a heady one or something. i don't know he's just like he's too it's too much like you know background music you'll still hear in asda or something it's just i don't know what it is about and he doesn't that's a thing with him his voice doesn't sound very his voice doesn't his, his voice and the way he kind of yeah, his voice doesn't sound like somebody that you'd think would be a commercial success. He sounds very gruff, right? But somehow he's able to, be, he's, he's been able to kind of captivate that audience. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's actual relationships with females he's been involved with and stuff. Maybe it's just the fact that he's a nice guy, uh, well-spoken, carries himself pretty well. I'm not too sure, but he's kept his nose clean for the most part. 
but I don't know, man. The music just doesn't connect with me in some regard. I don't know why it is. And again, the 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 track list looks pretty interesting. There's some really interesting features on there, but there's nothing. I don't know. Maybe it was, this will be better. I did I did like Vossibot to be honest. I, I played it out a few times when I've DJed and it's got a good reaction. But again, it's the kind of track. You know what Vossibot reminds me of? It reminds me a little bit of um um what's that um and uh Ariana Grande track on Seven Rings. I won it. I got it. And then it, like it sounded amazing the first time. Pop has that kind of ability. It's got low. It doesn't have a long shelf life. I remember hearing that song. I want it. I got it. it, uh, it, did it. Like that song sounded like pretty cool the first time I heard it. Then the second time I heard it, it started the cool points has to drop do, 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 like steadily. And it wasn't a thing of like you remember when Pharrell did Happy. Happy kind of ki- died because it was getting played everywhere. Similar to like you know Old Town Road by um, Lil Nas X, but. I didn't hear that Ariana Grande song play too often. Maybe I don't listen to radio and I'm deluded, but it kind of killed itself because it didn't really have that much shelf life. It was a bit of a dud. And Vossi Pop is similar to that in that regard. Don't know again, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just chatting shit, but it's not for me. But again, um his track list was interesting. Got what's that? He's got features on here from Heady One, uh Tiana Major. Who else is on there? Yeba interlude. He's got her on his on his track. Um, H as well. He's been everywhere. It's been a big year for H as well. He's been smashing it. Um, Ed Sheeran and Burner Boy, which would probably sound quite interesting. I'm interested to hear what it's gonna sound like. That would be pretty cool. Um, he's got obviously the Wiley Flow track, which Wiley's gonna be probably happy about, or maybe he's not gonna be happy about. But you know, you never know with him. But again, I'm just not. I don't know, man. I'm just. I'm not just. I'm not too sure why I haven't connected with Storm. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure because you know there might be assumptions or an illusion that he might be a plant, which I don't think is true. But I don't know what it is about him sonically that I just can't get around. Like I said before, his voice doesn't sound like somebody that I should. His voice sounds like some like I'm a very, I'm a voice guy, right? When it comes to rappers and MCs, like that's why I don't like Big Sean, right? Because his voice sounds terrible on a microphone. But when you sound like Stormzy, I should like you, innit? Really, but I don't. I don't know why it is. Again, maybe I'm chatting out my ass, but. I um, hope you guys understand where I'm coming from in that regard. And if you don't, tough. It's my podcast. and Say what I want. Anyway, moving on. Um, what else do we have here? Ah, this is quite funny. Do I want to talk about that being quite funny or is that not funny? Is that funny or is that funny? Maybe it is not funny. It is funny. Maybe it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. What else we have on here? Oh, um, yeah, we've got this weird article from Business of Fashion talking ill of my former workplace in Depop. Um, there's an article expose about Depop's supposed issue with uh, uh, what is the issue with here? The the headline says the following: uh, the darker side of hip hop. This um hip hop from Depop, sorry, the darker side of hip hop. An article from the Business of Fashion, and they are talking about uh the millions of teenagers that buy and sell clothes on Depop. Before it investigates, has found that m- many users are being also flooded with requests for nude photos. And other inappropriate images. Now, I I, I can't read the article because I haven't got business fashion professional, so I don't know exactly what they said. But I don't think it's that big of an issue. Um, I think it's something that is it should be expected of a platform that is predominantly aimed at a younger demographic. I think most social media platforms, you could, I think you can if safely say Depop is probably on that kind of um, skirt in between being a marketplace and also being a social media site. A lot of the girls and boys that sell on Depop identify a lot with the brand. They wear it with like a badge of honor. Some of the girls and boys on here completely kill Depop and really make a you know a huge amounts of money for the app and amounts of money for themselves, selling and buying vintage clothes, shipping stuff over from China, just being complete bosses, which is great to see. Entrepreneurship, smashing it. But again, I just think the fact that it attracts a really young audience, the fact that it's predominantly girls on that platform under the ages of 21 maybe i'm not surprised that creeps are looking at it as a viable option to maybe creep on girls i think any area where there is a high proliferation of young teenagers or young people and if there are people out there who are creeps who like those young people they're just going to go to that platform i don't think it's an intrinsically deep up issue deep up have really good um processes in place to kind of detect really crappy people 
really cool processes in terms of making sure if you're in danger and you feel like people are harassing you that you can report them and they act very swiftly the community support team is kind of probably one of the best out there super attentive and in general the company knows it's an issue and they always are trying to deal with it so again it's a weird feature to, it's a weird thing to kind of expose now because it's not something you're exposing everyone's very aware of it and they're trying to make the best out of a bad situation and generally i think depop's kind of contribution to fashion has been a lot more has has had a lot more it's more to it's more to talk about in terms of Depot's impact in fashion as opposed to you know creepy dudes creeping on kind of young girls. They've done a lot to kind of again allow young teenagers to essentially become entrepreneurs to start their own business and really to kind of really change the narrative in terms of what it means to be involved in the fashion industry. Right? There was this idea that you had to kind of you know kowtow to brands and you know lick the asses of gatekeepers. But if you're a kid and you're eighteen, nineteen, especially some of the bigger sellers on Depop don't even live in the major metropolitan and cities like london and liverpool and manchester they sometimes might live in a complete outskirts but they can they just you know they, they they stock up on many items from wherever they find them in boots in you know car boot sales and just sling those items back on depop and make insane gains insane you know resale value on that 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 again is cool education because it means that that person doesn't need to waste you know 16 no 30 grand coming to london and trying to get into the university of the arts you know to eventually end up being an intern for a designer they hate you know uh, but then earning what like thirteen thousand pound a year that's not worth it why not just sit at home sell amazing wares not move an inch and make you know 10 grand a week you know shifting items or deeper why not do that and people can do that so i think that would probably been a bit more of a uh you know of a better thing to kind of focus on but you know this is business of fashion they're a publication they need the clicks i've given them one click and maybe this is kind of the bait, the way to kind of bait people in but again i think depop success has been the fact that they've been and again it's international people all over the world are mostly all over north america and europe are you know killing it on depop that's a big story um they empower people all around the place they set up all these pop-up shops and stuff brand collaboration i've seen the stuff they've done with suffrages like really cool stuff that should be something they should be talking about more often but instead you've got all this bubblegum stuff about sexual harassment it's like come on man you've still got you still got designers and photographers in fashion who are still kind of molesting models out here and being creepers in shows and in you know behind runways and stuff and then you want to kind of profile an app that's trying to do the good thing again that probably is a consequence of depop not cow towering and not trying to be involved in the fashion industry but again this is the this is a kind of a blessing in that regard because it kind of puts more attention on the app and people will probably end up downloading it more but again it's an article from business fashion probably read it at your own um, you know in your own leisure if you want to it's probably a clickbait thing i haven't read it myself but i assume that's what they're talking about so check it yourself out if you want to see it and then you can go from there so um that's section of the English show episode number two five six thanks so much for tuning in as per usual i'm going to end this right now um if you are listening via the podcast app you know as per usual leave me a five star review people can find the show that'll be very welcomed and very appreciated if you're watching via the youtube app why not give me a like uh leave a little comment down below um you know and let me know what you think of the show subscribe if you want to see some more later and i will see you guys again very very soon for my friends regarding myself check out my website actionzinger.com you can find that in the show notes or in the description below but um until then i'll see you guys very very soon take care be safe and all that and see you later bye <laughs>